YouTube was started by Thomas Edison, or Tony Bennett, or Michael Jackson. Nah, probably not. This is all request history. Subscribe here, request the history of, well, anything, and it could be our next video. Thanks this time to Spencer Welsh II for requesting the history of the music video. In 1894, Thomas Edison combined his light box invention, the kinetoscope, and his record player, the gramophone, to capture a fiddle player and two dancers performing a song. This could be considered the first music video ever. However, not many people besides Edison really appreciated it or even saw it. The kinetoscope was popular throughout the 1900s. This coin-operated box showed moving pictures through the viewfinder, but it still had no sound. By the 1930s, motion pictures added sound technology, and the talkie movie was born. Movie houses popped up in towns everywhere, and folks gravitated to this great new form of entertainment. As more films were shown, the theater became a great place for other forms of entertainment. Between Features was the perfect place to show Max Flesher's sing-along shows where the audience would follow the bouncing ball. Walt Disney and Warner Brothers showcased silly symphonies and Looney Tunes. Although still not really a music video, it was an entertaining short with pictures and sound. In the 1940s, a machine called a Panoram, or a Soundy, started popping up in stores, arcades, and bus and train stations. It was really a jukebox with a picture screen. The French Scopatone and Italy Cinebox improved on the technology somewhat, and more started popping up, but they were still basically the same concept. According to his autobiography, Tony Bennett claims to have made the very first music video. In 1953, he released a film of himself walking in London to his song, Stranger in Paradise. Now that the popularity of TV started up in the 50s and 60s, shows like Ed Sullivan and Dick Clark's American Bandstand showed us performances from acts like Elvis and the Beatles. In 1964, the British TV show Top of the Pops ran every Thursday night on BBC TV and featured the best-selling recording artists of each week. This very popular show hosted the likes of the Beatles, the Stones, the Hollies, Roy Orbison, Chuck Berry, just to mention a few, but they were still live broadcasts. For every performance we saw on TV, the artist had to be in the studio to appear on TV, right? Well, bands started recording their performances as promotional short films so they could be seen on TV and still be somewhere else. According to RatherRareRecords.com, in 1964, the Moody Blues introduced what could be the world's first actual video. They stated that their promo short film of the band performing their hit Go Now was the first modern rock video. In 1966, The Monkees premiered on TV, and the show became arguably the strongest predecessor to the music video. Each episode showcased the group's hits as the four band members were recorded each week as they acted, danced, and just acted goofy to their hit songs. In 1975, the band Queen had just released their almost six-minute-long single called Bohemian Rhapsody. To promote the unusual song, they produced a full-length video of their performance. This concept video, as it was called, was also considered by many to be the first actual music video. In the 1980s, you know we're going to dive into MTV, but first, let's go back to give credit to the innovator just before MTV started. Back to the Monkees. Yeah, band member Mike Nesmith, he had his own production company called Pacific Arts. He produced a one-hour video called Elephant Parts. It was filled with parodies, songs, sketches, and basically music videos. It was groundbreaking enough that in 1981, Billboard called it the cleverest exercise in video programming to date. And not only did it win a Grammy Award in 1982, but Elephant Parts started the category Best Music Video, and it won the first Grammy in that category. Now, of course, the backbone of the music video. On August 1st, 1981, MTV's creator, John Lack's voice, was heard over the brand new TV station out of New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, rock and roll. In a bold and predictive move, that was followed by the Buggles video called Video Killed the Radio Star. It did. 
Ever since the launch of MTV, the visualization of song has become one of the most popular ways humans consume entertainment. The new medium went on to launch artists' careers and introduced the public to diverse musical genres and artists. Madonna, Duran Duran, Prince, Pat Benatar were all seen regularly on the 24-hour music video channel. Capitalizing on MTV's popularity, the same company started another music channel called VH1. 1983 brought us probably the most notable video ever made, Michael Jackson's Thriller. Almost 14 minutes long, it transformed the music video into a serious art form. It was so popular that the following year, the documentary, The Making of Thriller, sold over a million copies on VHS tapes. The Thriller music video was inducted into the U.S. National Film Registry by the Library of Congress, and they called it culturally and historically significant. In the 90s, the rise of the internet and video sharing brought us music videos to our screens just by typing into a search bar. MTV and VH1 had to refocus its programming and stop playing 24-hour music videos. In the 2000s, platforms like YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, they offered music and video right on our phones. Quality cameras and computer software being readily available had changed the landscape of music videos, and most anyone could be a creator. So it started out, perhaps with Thomas Edison through the Kinetoscope, the Scopatone, and the Cinebox, and from Tony Bennett to the Beatles, and Michael Jackson to YouTube and TikTok, it's just so easy to be entertained anytime, anyplace. Well, thanks for checking in. The next video could be yours. Subscribe and comment below, and your request could be history.